Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice because we have a choice. Choice. Everyone said, I've been chosen with the power to choose. And I choose life and not death. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you got that? <laughs> if you didn't give him, give him a little snug. You know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome to Sunday morning training session. The word of God is worth the drive. <laughs> God is good, isn't he? All the, time. All the time. All the time. You know, there's something about the power to choose, amen? We were born with power to choose. How many of y'all know the more right decisions you make, the better things are? <laughs> so we got to get to a percentage where we have higher percentage of correct decisions, amen? <laughs> Because if we're at a lower percentage, things happen that we don't like. Amen? Things happen we don't like. Everyone say, everything that comes on me, I bring on me. Amen? It's nobody else's fault. <laughs> and you can't blame the devil for everything, right? <laughs> the devil did not make me do it. <laughs> Would you turn to the book of Ephesians in chapter 1? Training for reigning. Take your manuals out. Ephesians chapter 1. Glory. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Let's speak it together, because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. And what you hear, the word says, as a man thinks, so he is. Amen? So as the word comes out, you're not only hearing it, it's changing your thought pattern. And what you're speaking, you're eating light, and light and darkness is leaving. Amen? So the more filled of light you are, the more clarity you have, the more things you can see, so that we can see all the way through, penetrate through the physical into the spirit realm. Why? Because we are soldiers of the Most High. Amen? We're warriors. There's no wimps. We're warriors. Amen? See, there's three levels in Christianity. It's always associated. Everything revolves around the tabernacle of God. There's three levels. You have the outer court, the second, which is called the holy place, and then there's the third called the most holy place. Those are three chambers of the tabernacle. There are those who live in the outer court, those who live in the holy place and those who live in the most holy place. Those are three choices that you have to make and what chamber you want to live in. Amen? Amen? You want power and authority and be back by heaven? You need to get out of the first chamber into the second. That's where the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. That's where tongues fly. That's where the gifts are. Warriors come out of the third chamber because they don't live for them. Amen? There's a difference. We need to have the anointing of Christ Jesus, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. And the anointing comes by worship. The second chamber always has to do with worship. Amen? As you worship, you are drinking. You're drinking. You're drinking. Then you're overflowing. Something begins to happen. The anointing comes and breaks the yokes of bondages. Scales come off the eyes. I mean, you can go on every door and knock and witness, amen? Even the Jehovah Witnesses do that. Amen. But have you cast out devils? Do you lay hands on the sick? God, people want to see the power of God, amen? amen? And you and I are to carry that power. It can only start when you're in the second chamber, not the outer court, amen? And then there's that place where you and I must maintain that position. It's called born-again place. It's the state of being born again. When you and I are born again, we are born by the Spirit. Amen? There's a place where we're born by the seed where we get a new spirit. 
Then there's a place where you're born by the Spirit and you are filled with the Spirit of God. And you're living out of the second chamber and the third chamber where no weapon formed against you can prosper. Everyone say, can't touch me. The devil can't touch me. Do, 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 do. Can't touch this. <laughs> Woo! Verse 3, let's speak it. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Blessed, Blessed us with every spiritual blessing and where? Amen. Heavenly places. So you need to get there, right? It's already there for you. You're blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That's phenomenal. If we can just comprehend that. Now, the carnal mind can't. Only the mind of the spirit can. Because only the mind of the spirit can interpret, actually, the three-dimensional realm and the three-dimensional levels of the word of God. If you're living out of the first chamber, you can only interpret first chamber. You can only interpret surface. But God has a three-dimensional in his word. It is a manual for training. He wants us to go deeper. Say, God wants me to go deeper. We should be changing from glory to glory. Amen? Those are experiences with God. Does everybody get it? Those are experiences. Are you ready? Verse 4. It says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. In what? In love. In love. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, by which he made us what? Accepted in the beloved. Now, it's, just because we're predestined doesn't mean you're going to make it. No, you've got to cooperate. Amen? Does everybody get it? The price of victory is cooperation. If you're not willing to be learned and trained, can you have victory? No, because it's a war. It's a war of the soul. Everyone say, I'm called, called. to battle. Yeah. My, purpose My purpose is to what? Destroy Satan. Satan's kingdom. And my destiny is what? To infiltrate the world system and rescue those who have been lost with the talents God's given us. Amen? But you can't go out there in your own strength, can you? You got to go out in the power of the Holy Spirit so you're back by heaven. Praise God. In verse 7, let's speak it. In him we have what? Redemption, Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Now, is grace unmerited favor or is it unmerited love? Unmerited love. Because what is grace? It's God's plan to what? Escape. When Jesus came in the fullness of truth and grace, it's because he came with a plan for me and you to escape the deception of the devil and the wrath of God. There is no such thing, I'm going to say it again, no such thing as grace being God's favor. It's God's unmerited love. Amen? You earn his favor by obedience. Has everybody got it? Oh, glory. It says in verse 8, which he what? Made to abound toward us in all what? Wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Come on, speak it with me in verse 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance. Everyone say inheritance. If I've obtained an inheritance, that means I'm an heir. Ooh. Can you imagine being an heir of God? Oh, snap. See, when you know who you are and your identity is fulfilled of who you are, you know you're an heir. No matter where you go, you just say, my daddy owns this place. Man, you can't park there. Baloney, my daddy owns that place. Now, don't tell the officer that, okay? <laughs> he might not have the same mind of Christ you do. <laughs> 
Okay, verse 11, in him also we have obtained a what? An inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who what? First trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. An inheritance. You know, people are, are, are so anxious about their physical inheritance. But this is a spiritual inheritance. This is one that's forever. Everything according to the carnal realm is temporary. Amen? Go to Ephesians 3 for a moment. In verse 1. Joint heirs. Everyone say joint heirs. Joint heirs. That's tonight, today's training. Joint heirs. In verse 1, let's speak it. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have what? Heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit of his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be what? Fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his powers. Heirs of Christ. Heirs. The word says he who's in Christ is a new creation. But nobody goes to that part that says, only those who are led by the Spirit. It's pretty amazing. Go to Romans 8 1 for a minute. Romans 8 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 8 1. Are you there? Let's speak it. There is therefore now no what? Condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Everybody stops there, you know. But there's a qualification. He says, who what? Who do not walk according to the flesh. So you're shacking up, you're sinning, you're in fellowship with darkness. You're still using, you're still drinking, you're still doing all these other foolish things. That's called association of the flesh. But I believe in Jesus. Well, you're L-O-S-T. Living out of salvation's truth. Because who you serve when you die is where you go, amen? He said this, he says, man, you're disqualified if you think that you're in Christ and living according to the flesh. But I'll qualify you by this. But, by, but only those who live according to the what? To the Spirit. That means there's an area where you and I must be led by the Spirit. Have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all know the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God? Amen. Amen. He was Christ. He is the Christ. Uh, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5, please. Oh, that we may comprehend that. When there is an area of joint air, then there is that area of identity. See, people are still trying to be People, identity of other things, heroes, false heroes, sports players, and so forth. Nothing wrong with sports players and whatever. I'm just saying that people are trying to live up to the expectation of carnality instead of living up to the expectation of godliness. There's a difference. There's a difference. It's better to be known as a man and woman of God than the greatest mother, the greatest father the greatest worker, the greatest builder, the greatest sports player. It's better be known as a man or woman of God than anything else. Amen? Ephesians 5 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Therefore be what? Imitators of God is what? Dear children. It didn't, I didn't say we were. He doesn't say you are God. It says be imitators of God. Amen? Wow, well, man, that means I'm a joint heir. I'm a joint heir. 
That's phenomenal. And what does he say in verse 2? And walk in love as Christ also has loved us, giving himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Are you ready for verse 3? But what? Fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that what? No fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater or has what? Any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of what? Disobedience. So can you lose your inheritance? Yes. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. He says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all godliness or goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? Days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Powerful. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. Joint heir. It's good to hear the pages turning on a Sunday morning. The faster you turn them, the better you can fan your neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 8, 9. Remember, we just said that those who are in Christ are new creations. Amen? So there's no condemnation to those who do not walk in the flesh, but walk according to the Spirit. Spirit. Beautiful. In verse 9, it says what? But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if, the, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. In other words, if you are in fellowship with Him. Everyone say fellowship. fellowship. In the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. So there should always be a fruit of righteousness, not goodness. Hello? Oh, glory. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Is this a letter written to unbelievers or believers? Believers. believers. Amen. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but to receive the spirit of adoption by whom you cried out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. It says, the Spirit himself bears witness with, in our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then what? Heirs. Everyone say heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Now, here, see that word if? That means that here's a choice you make. You have a choice to make. That means cooperation. When you see the word if, that means cooperation. If what? Indeed, we, are, we suffer with him that we may also be what? Glorify with him. Every time, some, see, when struggles come, many people run instead of battle through. Verse 18, speak it. 
For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which, which shall be revealed in us. What is that suffering? That suffering is the battle constantly. It's the battle of the unseen room, world, that realm, that is influencing me and you every day. And if it can't get you while you're awake, they try to get you while you sleep. But there's a way to battle this and overcome. The word says that we are more than conquerors. So there's an area of training. Amen? Training for reigning. But if you don't practice it, are you going to perfect it? No. no. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Praise God. <laughs> In other words, if fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we are what? Joint heirs. We have an inheritance, promises, blessings. Suffering is the battle of the unseen influence to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There are assassins of your destiny. They are out to destroy me and you. Has everybody got it? They're out to what? Destroy. We must be led by the Holy Spirit so that we shall be known as sons and daughters of the eternal purpose, walking in a divine order. See, when you're in divine order, there's something that begins to happen. A divine character comes. There's divine power, divine favor, divine blessing. See, that's a position. That's where Paul always said, position me. I am positioned to where it's no longer I that live. So I don't fight for my life anymore. I fight for his. But you must learn how to fight spiritually. This is not a physical battle. Amen? It's a spiritual battle. That's why it's called spiritual warfare. And Genesis 25. You can always go to eternallibrary.org. It has all kinds of powerful teachings. In fact, one of them is called the weapons of God. Go and learn them. Amen? There's another powerful teaching called false identity. I think there is. What is it? Spiritual identity? Spiritual identity. <laughs> Genesis 25 and verse 19. Is everybody there? Me either. Hallelujah. Genesis 25 verse 19. This is the geology of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, his wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Paddan Armin, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. But the Children struggled together within her. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? Can you imagine a woman being pregnant and feeling the kids? <laughs> they weren't playing basketball or tennis. There was a battle going on. She sensed a battle within her. Wow. They struggled together. Within her, and she said, If all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. Now I want you to grab hold of this because this is a parallel of Eve. Oh, you'll get it. One people shall be stronger than the other. The older shall receive the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. Now that's wild, isn't it? Can you imagine a kid coming out red? I don't know if one else came out red. Red, I mean red. Red. <laughs> 
and the first came out red, and he was like a hairy garment all over, beastly even. So they called his name Esau. After that, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's what? Heel. Grab hold. Remember that. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. Verse 27. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was mild and dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. But Rebekah loved Jacob. <laughs> Jacob is also known as Israel. Does everybody get it? Okay. Now, check this out. Verse 29. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in front of the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same red stew. There's something about red with this, dude. For I am weary. Therefore his name was called Adam. This is where the Edomites came. And if you follow the lineage of Edomites, God wanted to destroy all of them because they carried a genetic gene, Nephilim. Is everybody okay? I mean, came out of, yes. That genetic gene came all the way down. <laughs> but Jacob said, sell me your what? Your birthright, as is of this day. And Esau said, look, I am about to die. Man, he was more full, desired, desired more things of the flesh than of the spirit, right? What is this birthright to me? In other words, it didn't mean nothing to him. Why? Because he wasn't to have it anyways. Then Jacob said, swear to me of this day. So he swore to him. And sold his birthright to Jacob. He sold his birthright. He sold his inheritance. You know how many people are selling out today? All over. Believers are selling their birthright and joint heir of Christ and their inheritance for the things of the world. For addiction. For lust. For fame and fortune. They're selling their birthright. They're selling their souls to Satan. See, you'll serve one or the other. That's it. There is no gray area. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his own birthright. He despised it. He hated it. He sold it out. He gave it to Jacob. Now it came right to the right lineage. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Go to Genesis chapter 3. There's a genetic spiritual inheritance and a physical genetic inheritance. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3 and verse... 14. Now this was the judgment from the Lord after Adam and Eve blew it. In verse 14 it says, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle. What did he do? Are you ready for this? He slept with Eve, produced an offspring. Same parallel. He said, and, and more than every beast of the field, on your belly you shall go. Why? Because he was upright. 
and you shall eat dust all the days of your life, and I will put enmity between you and the what? And the woman. And between what? Your seed, the serpent's seed, and her seed. Why? Because she most likely had twins. Now watch this. He shall what? Bruise your head, and you shall bruise his what? Who grabbed the heel? Esau. Does everybody understand this? Do you see the parallel of this? Why? Because it had to repeat, because after the flood, things had to be reestablished again. Because the Nephilim came through the genetic. One of Noah's sons named Ham married a Nephilim, and it continued to come forth again. Is everybody okay? Esau and Jacob's twins sold their birth. Esau and Jacob. They were twins, right? Esau sold his birthright. Amen? So we see here that the, here it became the seed of the serpent and the seed of promise. It was the seed of the serpent and the seed of promise. And the seed of the serpent is still extending. In fact, it rules the earth. Joshua 24. In fact, hold on before we go. I want to finish this. Verse 16, so you get a better understanding. Because this was the judgment from God to the woman. See, the sin was not eating an apple. Hello? That's all fairy tales. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sour in what? Conception. Why? Because that was the judgment. So from this day forward, why? Because you produce the seed of the serpent. And that was Cain. Come all the way down. Cain and Abel. Does everybody get it? Amen. And if you follow Cain's lineage, giants came from there. Does everybody understand? Amen. And in pain you shall bring forth children. That was her judgment. That was a judgment to all women now. But God can change that, can he? Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Do you see what occurred? It's still happening, right? But people are selling out their birthright because of that fight. The devil still wants to steal your birthright. Nothing has changed. It's still going on. It is a spiritual fight, not physical. And until we make what is unseen to become seen, we will easily be deceived and go back in that cycle of deception, thinking that we're good people. Forget good people. God's looking for righteous people. Those are things that are pleasing God. Amen? Joshua 24. Joshua 24. Is everybody okay? But well, nobody ran out to the door. Lock that just in case. <laughs> so we understand that these Nephilim before the flood, when God destroyed the flood, all of those Nephilim that died giants and all their offsprings, so forth, when they died, when God destroyed them, they became demons. This is a disembodied spirit looking for a body. So look at they're looking for you. Why? Because they get fed off of emotion. Is lust emotion? Look at addiction. Isn't addiction overwhelming desire? That's called lust. It's no different. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Isn't pride a killer? It's the most killing thing of mankind. Joshua 24, 14. Speak it with me, please. Now, therefore, what? Fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river in Egypt. Serve the Lord. The word Egypt means house of bondage. Okay? What is he saying? Gods. Well, people began to serve themselves. They became their own gods. 
And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Did he give them the power to choose? Yeah. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites, known as also, and then, then there was Adamites and so forth, whose land you dwell, but as, far, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, of bondage, from the house of bondage, who did those great signs in our sight, preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom he passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites, who dwelt in the land. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. But if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and, and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. After he has done you what? Good. So in other words, things seem going to f fine, then all of a sudden people drift and serve other gods. He says, yeah, well, what was good for you, now I will destroy. Is everybody okay? And Joshua, and the people said to Joshua, no, but we will serve the Lord. So Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen the Lord for yourself to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Now, therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve. And his voice, we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and <clears throat> made for them a statute and an ordinance as Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone, set it up there under the oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness to us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord, which he spoke to us. It shall therefore be a witness to you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart each to his own what? inheritance powerful powerful in other words we have the power to choose the ability to make right decisions without the holy spirit and fellowship it is very difficult your high percentage of right decisions will it, it just can't it can't get there and man you, you just can't make the right decisions without the power of christ ephesians 4 Decisions that please God are called righteous decisions. Ephesians 4. Is everybody okay? Glory. In verse 11. What does it, what does it say? Let's speak it together. And he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. In other words, for the training. Equipping means training. These are training sessions. Amen? Verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith, and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the anointing, Christ, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. That we should no longer be what? Children. Children. Ignorant. Tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, trickery of men, and the cunning crafting of the deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may what? Grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together 
by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes what? Growth of the body for the edifying itself in, in love. There are many not willing to be trained, not willing to be taught. That means they cannot maintain. Amen? They cannot maintain. In Galatians 4, in verse 1, Training for reigning. Nobody can do it on, them, on their own, amen? amen? In verse 1, let's speak it. Now I say that the what? The heir. The heir. Everyone say, I'm an heir. heir. Joint heir of Christ. As long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. But under what? Guardians, instructors, teachers. To what? Train. And stewards until a time appointed by the Father. Listen, how far do you want to grow? Then there's got to be training. Listen, you cannot be an attorney until you go to school. Because you've got to learn the laws, don't you? Amen? You can't be a doctor unless you learn how to... The stuff. <laughs> doctor stuff. Right? Well, God, you, you want to be a man and woman of God, then you've got to learn how to battle. You've got to learn how to fight. You've got to learn how to stay in position. You've got to be able to read the strategies of the enemy. The Word says that the Spirit tells us things to come. You've got to be able to see all the way through the physical into the spirit realm. You've got to be able to discern what kind of demons are on people or ones that are attacking you. You must be able to hear his voice. Amen? That's what this training is about. Why? Because the rule of this world is Satan. You're being attacked by demons, fallen angels, and humans that are filled with demons. Rebellious. Bewitched. Deceived. Is everybody okay? Verse 3. Even so, when we were what? Children were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his what? Son, a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth, what? The spirit of his son called the Holy Spirit who empowers me in you. Into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, which means daddy. That's relationship. Therefore, you are no longer a slave of the world, but a son and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which were not nature, or by nature are not gods. But now after you've known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? Why do you want to go back to the world? Plum nuts. How stupid can we be and still breathe? Amen? That's crazy. How can, you, how can people give up their inheritance for temporary fulfillment of emotional desire and to lose it all? To lose it all. That's what the devil does, doesn't he? Amen? Turning to the world. And why? Because they're not exposing their own influence causes unhealthy and ungodly decisions. It promotes pride. Pride. Why? Because the old man is the offspring of darkness. Your old man, I'm not talking about your husband or your boyfriend or your exes. I'm talking about your old man that's still in you must be crucified every day. Must be crucified. You must be shut up and nailed to the cross. You cannot allow your old man to get in front of you or he will mislead you. That's what you call the flesh. The flesh is the old man. Amen? He's the what? 
old man. He's the offspring of darkness. What's he want to do? He wants to break your inheritance. He wants to steal back everything from you for the devil. Why? Because we were known as devils at one time. We were born in the image and likeness of darkness. The only image and likeness of God we were born is by having a free will. Or else you wouldn't need to be born again, right? Amen. Amen. Does everybody get it? Well, we were born in darkness. We were born in sin. It says we were conceived in sin. We were rebellious. We served darkness. We served evil. It was all about me, myself, and I. Until born of the Spirit. And it's no longer about me, myself, and I. It's about Son, Father, and Holy Ghost. Proverbs 16. Glory. Proverbs 16. Is everybody okay? Glory. Proverbs 16, verse 16. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? How much better to get what? Wisdom than gold. What wisdom is that from beneath or above? Above. above. Amen. And get understanding is to be chosen rather than what? So he's saying, man, get some wisdom and get some understanding of what? God. Does everybody get it? Get some understanding of the Holy Spirit. What good is they have all kinds of certificates of accomplishments and go to hell? You know, every one of us is sent into this realm to fulfill a mission from God. Amen? We are to fulfill that mission. You'll never be happy until you begin to fulfill that mission. You'll be miserable. No matter what you try and do, no matter how many certificates you get, no matter how many buildings you build, no matter how many things you succeed in, no matter how much drugs, how many people you sleep with, you'll never be fulfilled until you fulfill the mission that you've been born and created to fulfill. Verse 23. What's it say? Is everybody okay? Oh, 22, I'm sorry. Understanding is a what? Well, spring of life to him who has it. But correction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his what? Mouth. And adds learning to his lips. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seems right in a man, but its end is a way of death. A person who labors... Labors for himself, for his hungry mouth dries him on. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody okay? I'm going to go to verse 18 for a minute. Pride goes what? Before destruction and a haughty spirit before a, before a fall. Pride. It says, better to be of a humble spirit with a lowly than a what? Than to divide the spoil with the proud. Pride is a killer. Personal reverence into a deadly end. P-R-I-D-E. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah. Hang tough, a few more scriptures. You got it written, then go teach it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Let's speak it together. Thus says the Lord, cursed. Cursed is the man who what? Trusts in man, trusts in himself. And makes flesh, that's the old man, his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Bad. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. That means dry. 
and shall not see when good comes, blinders. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and the salt land which is not inhabited. But what? Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when he comes. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, which means thoughts, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his what? Doings. You know what God does with us? In other words, with individuals, first of all, one of the things he does is he sets boundaries. There are spiritual boundaries that he sets. And if you, if you earn the trust, he begins to expand those boundaries. If you lose the trust, he brings those boundaries back. Does everybody get it? One thing we're doing is earning the trust of the Lord. But you first must trust him. Can you trust someone that don't trust you? No. No, you can't. So what he does is he sets boundaries for me and you. And as long as you stay in those boundaries and you earn, the boundaries begin to expand. But when we step over the boundaries that he's placed, he'll bring those back. Sometimes you have to start all over again. 2 Timothy 3. Paul rebuked the believers because... They started right in the spirit and left it, left the spirit and began to act like children again, a carnal children. And he rebuked them for doing that. He said, man, by now you should have been teachers, but here you're still eating, drinking milk. He said you should have been eating steak, full course meals. But you're still drinking milk. Sec, uh, Second Timothy 3, I'm sorry. Is everybody there? Verse 1. And let's speak it together. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Is there perilous times? Hey, man, things are happening. They're not getting any better. For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Yes. Lovers of money. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving. Now, what he's saying by unloving is mean lusting instead of true love of God. Unforgiving, bitter, slanders without control over self, which is or self-control, which is control over the old man. Brutal, despisers of good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And they have a form of godliness, but they deny his power, which means denying his presence. They become religious with no power. Does everybody get it? For this sort of those who creep into households and ministries and all kinds of things and Make captives of gullible men and women, loaded with sins and led away with various lusts. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning their faith, but they will progress no further. There's been limitations set on them by the enemy. For their folly will be manifest to all, as there is also one. But you have carefully followed my doctrine and manner of life, purpose and faith, long-suffering and love. Let me share with you again. These are alien deities. And what I mean by alien deities, these are spirits that are alienated from the life of God. That's what alien is associated with. Is everybody with me? These are not, you know, little green men. Although they might be, I don't know. These days there's grays, there's all kinds of hybrids out there now. We're not going to get into that. But these are 
alienated spirits, demons, from they're, not, they're alienated from the life of God. They come to influence. Why? They want to what? Steal your identity. They want to kill your inheritance, and then they want to destroy you. That's what it's about. 2 Corinthians 4. Second Corinthians four verse seven. Is everybody there? Second Corinthians four verse seven. Thank you, Lord. Let's speak it. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are what? Hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down and not destroyed. Always caring about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that the grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, what? We don't lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Sometimes it doesn't feel like a moment. Praise God, but compared to eternity, it's a moment. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are e eternal. I'm going to close at 1 Timothy 4. Joint heirs. Are you joint heired? Are you positioned, living right with Christ? It's a beautiful thing. It's an eternal thing. In verse 12. 1 Timothy, verse 12. Is everybody there? In ver uh, chapter 4. Let no, uh, verse 12. Let no one despise your youth, and, but be an example to the believers in what? Word, Word conduct, and love, and spirit, and faith, and purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourselves entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will both save yourself and those who what? Hear you. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I apply the blood of Jesus on the seed that's been imparted. I pray that it will grow and bear fruit for your glory. We take this opportunity even right now, Lord, to repent before we receive communion. We repent for anything that we've done that's offended you. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. And as we prepare our hearts for communion and true fellowship and communion with you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen.